Good morning, my friends. It's Tuesday, March 5th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. I found a depiction of a clay sculpture. This is from the third century BC before Christ, or BCE before the Common Era, whichever you prefer. This slave is gazing up to heaven. Next to him is his token, identity token, in case of flight, it reads in Greek, hold me lest I flee and restore me to my master. Hold me lest I flee and restore me to my master. A human being in bondage, longing for freedom and for God. We continue in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. He's explaining again that people who are married should stay married, people who are not married should stay unmarried unless they're full of lust and then they should get married because that's not a sin. And he goes on and on about this quite a lot, must have bothered him. And then he says something interesting. He says, I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. To promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. Not to put any restraint on you. The word restraint in the Koine Greek is the same as the root word for rain. So not to pour down rain upon you, not to rain on your parade, so to speak, not to pour down unnecessary requirements upon you, but I do this so that you will be free. Paul's understanding, again, was that everything in this life is basically just a waiting ground. We're not supposed to make the kingdom of God here. We're not supposed to see the kingdom of God here. We're supposed to remember that it's coming. Christ is coming. Stay where we are. Stay in your enslavement. Stay in your marriage. Stay in your state of singlehood, even if you're not fully satisfied with any of those things, because Christ is coming. Focus on God. Pray to God. There's a lot of validity in this when you pray. You have to sit still and you, you can't scratch yourself and you can't get up and do your laundry and you can't do your emails and you do have to kind of let yourself be however you are. There is a truth in that. But at the same time, to not try to better yourself in this life. Um, I disagree with Paul on that. I think that Jesus wanted us to better ourselves. He said the kingdom of heaven is near. It's right here. I don't think he was wanting us to wait for heaven, but to achieve it here. But Paul felt like we were supposed to wait. And it was his form of devotion. And that's a good thing. But to watch injustice, to see this slave looking up to heaven and hoping for something more and not try to make the world better, to me is to give up too early and too easily. Now, Jesus was crucified because the state of the world was broken and he wanted to show us how to make it better in this life so that the life to come will be even better. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to discern your call to us. If we are to sit still, and wait, then have us wait. If we are to strive for justice and peace, then help us to do so. Perhaps some of us are called to different things and at different stages in our lives. But help us to understand that, that you do believe we can make the world a better place, that we are not to give up, but to press on, yearning for your kingdom here on earth as well as in heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. 
I ask you now to name aloud the people that you love who are on your hearts who need prayer. Bring peace to this world, O oh Lord. Help us never to enslave one another again, but to see the dignity of every human being and to respect and honor that dignity. Help us to cherish this beautiful planet that you've given us and use its resources wisely. This we pray in the name of Jesus, your son, who loved us and strove to make the world a better place. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.